This is a line follower robot, a small autonomous robot that follows a path using sensors. You've probably seen one before, or maybe even built one yourself. But have you ever seen one big enough to carry a person? This video is sponsored by PCBWay. In my previous video, I built a self-driving go-kart using machine learning and trained it to drive around my workshop. It was during that project, while I was taping the track on my floor, that I had the idea of building a giant line follower. A line follower is a robot designed to follow a path, most commonly a black line on a white surface. It does this using infrared sensors, which shine infrared light onto the track and measure how much bounces back. As the robot moves, its microcontroller is continuously processing the sensor data, checking if it's staying on course. If it starts to steer off the line, the sensors detect the change, and the microcontroller adjusts the motor speeds to steer it back on track. My human-sized robot works the same way, but the main difference is how it steers. Instead of having a motor for each wheel, like most line followers, my robot just has one drive motor and then a separate motor to control the steering. The chassis of this robot is a crazy cart, and I had originally used it for my self-driving project because its sharp steering makes it perfect for driving around in here. Since I had already built a servo motor for the steering, all I really needed to do to turn this into a line follower was build the sensor array. The steering motor is from a power wheelchair, and I'm using a 10-turn potentiometer for position feedback. Here's an animation from my previous video demonstrating how it's assembled. Now let's talk about the sensors. These infrared sensors are a type of proximity sensor that detect objects based on reflected infrared light. The clear LED is an IR LED, which works as the transmitter, and the component next to it is a photodiode that works as the receiver. The IR transmitter constantly emits infrared light, and the receiver checks for reflections. If there's an object within range, the light bounces back, and the sensor detects it. Infrared light is outside the visible spectrum, so to the human eye, it looks like the transmitter is always off, but some cameras with weaker IR filtering can actually see it. A white or light-colored surface reflects the light, so the sensor outputs a zero, while a black surface absorbs the light, so the output is a one. I'm using these sensors for this project mainly because of their working range and adjustable sensitivity. The concrete floor in my workshop has stains and dark patches that can easily mess with the sensor readings, but with a bit of tuning, I can get them to detect the line and ignore all the imperfections. Plus, these sensors are super cheap. For a smaller advanced line follower, these wouldn't be the best choice because of their size, but for a giant robot like this, the size really doesn't matter at all. This was my very first prototype, which I named the Janky Array. It wasn't perfect, but it was a start. The Janky Array had a total of 10 sensors, and while it technically worked, there was a lot of room for improvement. The steering was jerky, and it would only stay on track at slow speeds. To fix this, I need to further tune my PID controller and add more sensors for better steering precision. For the second prototype, I doubled the sensor count to 20. This instantly improved steering smoothness and accuracy, but I wanted to push it even further. For my third and final prototype, I went up to 30 sensors. Since this required a lot of input pins, I swapped out the Arduino Nano for a Mega Pro Mini. To power all the sensors, I'm using an Adafruit PowerBoost 1000 with 18650 cells. The 30 sensor version was the best yet. The only downside was that adjusting the potentiometers for each sensor took more effort, but once they were properly adjusted, the performance was great. At this point, I felt confident enough to design a PCB for the sensor array. I decided to go with 32 sensors for the final version. The PCBs for this project were supplied by PCBWay. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video and sending over the sensor array PCB as well as the PCB for the mini line follower. Ordering with PCBWay is super easy. You just choose your specifications, upload your Gerber files, and place your order. They offer quick turnaround times and high quality manufacturing. 
whether you need standard PCBs, flexible PCBs, or even aluminum PCBs. The PCB for the sensor array is massive. Um, it's over 500 millimeters wide, and because of its size, I went with a 2.4 millimeter thickness for extra sturdiness. If you're looking for PCBs for your projects, or even 3D printed or CNC machined parts, definitely check out PCBWay. After I had all the components soldered to the circuit board, I made a front bumper out of aluminum. The bumper also acts as the mounting bracket for the sensor array. Okay, so for the track, I'm using this two inch wide floor marking tape it's basically like extra wide electrical tape. This stuff's good because it's easy to stretch and make bends in the track. All right, so I spent a bunch of time off camera adjusting all the potentiometers and tuning the PID controller, and I think I have this thing working pretty well. It's not perfect, but to be honest, I'm getting a little tired of this track, so I think I'm gonna film a few more laps, and then I'm gonna tear it up, and I'm gonna make a new one. Okay, so here's a quick demo of how I power this thing up. So this switch provides power to all of the sensors, and then here I've made another power supply, which provides power to the Mega Pro Mini, as well as to this Arduino Nano that's running my servo motor sketch. And that Arduino is also connected to this USB power switch. This is the power switch for the DC motor driver for the steering motor. And this is the power switch for my speed controller. This switch here turns on and off the PWM signal that's being sent from the Mega Pro Mini. And then finally, this switch here engages the steering motor. And after all that, you're ready to go. It looks so bare in here now. It's kind of sad seeing it gone. All right, so for the second track, I decided to go with a figure eight. It's tricky coming up with fun designs in such a small space, but I thought the intersecting lines would make things more interesting and add a bit of extra complexity. Turns out the line follower can handle the intersection without a problem. It'd be fun to test this in a much larger space someday and experiment with faster speeds. I have to be careful in my workshop because one wrong turn sends me straight into a wall or whatever else happens to be in the way. Overall, the line follower handled this track pretty well, 
but it did crash four times, and unfortunately on the fourth crash, the sensor array broke. What's kind of funny though, is that it was the PCB way box that it crashed into. Good thing I've got spares. Oh no. Uh-oh. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking or even subscribing. Thanks for watching.